I just seem to have great timing these days. I went out of town and AMD goes and announces their new RDNA 3 graphics cards. The 7900 XT, which is gonna sell for 900 bucks, and the 7900 XTX, which is gonna sell for $1,000. Those are launching on December 13th, but today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about my reaction to the announcements, as well as answering a few other questions sent in by you guys. This is Probing Paul, episode number 75. Thanks for being here, and if you have questions to ask me for next month, put those in the comment section down below. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the new Height Eclipse HG10 wireless gaming headset, combining a clean matte lunar gray color scheme with competition grade functionality, including 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity with 30 hour estimated battery life, high fidelity 40 millimeter neodymium drivers, a detachable unidirectional mic, USB type C connectivity with an included 1.8 meter cable to play and charge at the same time, and conveniently accessible controls for power, volume, and mute. For more on the Height Eclipse HG10 headset, click the sponsor link in the video description. Before we begin, a quick reminder that I am no stranger to being probed. In fact, I do it almost monthly. This is a monthly Q&A series. And there's a Probing Paul playlist that's linked in the description if you guys wanna check out all those other times. I'm only a little bit sore from that. And we begin with our first question from Alcreon. Uh, we have lots of talk recently about a flood of used GPUs and then all the new launches that have been coming out. We have, of course, the RDNA 3 GPUs. We have Nvidia's RTX 4080 16 gig, which is launching in November. So the question is, especially in light of GPU price on the secondary market, what are my thoughts on these new announcements? So in order to sculpt the random jumble of thoughts in my head into something a little bit more cohesive, uh, I have separated this into three things. Three sort of plus things or positive things and three things that are maybe a little bit more negative about AMD's announcements. And we should all be considering this in light of what is perhaps AMD's biggest competition, kind of like they did on the CPU side with the 5800X 3D, it's perhaps themselves. If we look at the retail prices right now for the RX 6000, series cards and specifically the top end ones, the 6900 XT and 6950 XT. And I'm just taking a quick look at PC part picker. Prices are significantly reduced from the original MSRPs with the 6900 XT available for maybe 660 to $670. And even the 6950 XT available for less than 800 down to 760 for the cheapest one here. And that's not even taking into account the secondary market, the used market right now, which is currently also a wash in many, many GPUs for sale. That said, my first positive point to make is that AMD is really hitting NVIDIA hard where it hurts right now. And the two areas that NVIDIA is sort of struggling is with pricing, which uh, lots of people say that $1,200 and $1,600 is pretty expensive for a new graphics card regardless of the performance. And also the fact that these cards lack the 12VH power connector that NVIDIA has really been struggling with with the RTX 4090 because there's a certain number of them out in the wild that have been melting and NVIDIA is still trying to deal with that situation. So first off, in terms of pricing, while well, about $1,000 or even $900 is a hefty amount to pay for a graphics card, this does look fairly reasonable when you compare it to Nvidia's cards that are out there. Again, perhaps less so when you look at current prices for like the 6900 XT, but a big reason that AMD is able to keep prices down is because they've gone with a chiplet design for this gaming GPU. This allows them to use dies with two manufacturing processes on the same graphics card. Uh, we have the five nanometer graphics compute die at the center that does the heavy lifting and then on the slightly older and slightly less expensive to manufacture on the six nanometer process we have the memory cache die and there are six of those three positioned on either side of the GCD uh, with the 7900 XTX all six of them are enabled with the 7900 XT one of them is a dummy die the memory cache dies each contain a 64-bit memory controller as well as the second gen infinity cache providing more cache that's directly accessible by that graphic compute die and not having to go out to the actual GDDR6 memory. And a big reason this is going to help AMD keep costs down for these chips is because of yields. By using smaller chips, they're able to get a lot more chips per wafer that is manufactured, and they're also going to have less wasted chips around the edge of that wafer, so they're gonna have better yields. Note that each of these MCD dies is 37 square millimeters, which again is very tiny. That's about half the size as one of the CCDs in a Ryzen CPU. And the 300 square millimeter GCD 
at the center, while much larger, is still significantly smaller than some of the large monolithic dies that are currently being produced on the NVIDIA side. And again, if you have smaller chips, you're able to fit more of them on a circular wafer, so you're gonna have better yields. AMD was also keen to point out that these graphics cards feature two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors versus the 12VH power connector that the RTX 4090s use, and that's because the board power for the 7900XTX is 355 watts, which you can supply with two 8-pin power connectors, plus the 75 watts that's available natively through the PCI Express connector. And the same goes for the 7900XT, which has a board power of 300 watts, which is still well below that threshold. Now, to be fair, you're probably still gonna see massively overbuilt versions of the 7900XT and XTX. Uh, this is Gigabyte's RTX 4090, which has a four-slot massive cooler on it. You're probably also gonna see board manufacturers that go with three 8-pin power connectors. I have no idea if any of them are gonna attempt to put a 12VH power connector on a 7900XT or XTX. But for anyone who is looking for an in-place upgrade, this is a decent point to make. It's easier to drop a smaller card into a case that doesn't necessarily need a lot more space, and you don't necessarily need to upgrade your power supply too. The one thing I do wanna clarify here though is that AMD definitely did not plan this because of the issues that Nvidia has been having with the 12VH power connector. AMD was already planning to do it this way, and it's just a happy coincidence for them that the 12VH power connector has been having issues, and that allows them to get some jabs in at Nvidia for that reason. So hitting Nvidia where they're hurting right now is definitely a good thing if you're interested in competition between these two GPU manufacturers because competition generally is good for the consumer. There is a third area where Nvidia was kind of lacking when the 4090 came out that uh, AMD has hit back at. I've separated that on its own to be a second item here on my list because I thought it was a pretty important one and that's the inclusion of DisplayPort 2.1. First off, the link bandwidth for these cards is 54 gigabits per second. DisplayPort 2.1 actually goes all the way up to 80 gigabits per second, but this does allow AMD to support compatibility with a lot of the standards that go along with that spec, such as 12 bits per channel color for up to 68 billion colors, and some pretty crazy resolutions and refresh rates like 8K 165 hertz or 4K 480. As many reviewers have pointed out, it was just a little bit baffling that Nvidia didn't go with DisplayPort 2.1 for the RTX 4090, but AMD was able to answer back and say, hey, we've got that, we can support that. Whether or not the 7900 XT and XTX can actually push frame rates, such as 1440p at up to 900 hertz, or 4K at up to 480 hertz, remains to be seen, and that's gonna vary a lot on the title that's being tested, and of course, having monitors that actually can support those resolutions and refresh rates, but outside of gaming, once these panels are available, and we'll hopefully we'll see more of these at CES in January, AMD can say, yes, we support that. And if you want to just do video playback at a crazy resolution like that, we have graphics cards that actually support that standard right now. And then my third positive reaction to this announcement, and part of the reason why I have a 6900 XT so I can hold it here, is that, well, since I didn't go to Las Vegas with the rest of the tech media to actually hold one of the 7900 XTXs in my hand, I think the design is pretty cool. And that's cool as in aesthetically pleasing. I even like the little three red accent lines that they put on the cooler itself. And some interesting features like having an ambient temperature sensor that's built into one of the fans. And they gave us a pretty nice exploded view animation to get a look at the internal design of the card, which has a three fan cooling solution. And as mentioned earlier, it's not that much bigger than the predecessor. It's only about 10 millimeters longer and it maintains 2.5 slot spacing, which is great news for anyone who might be looking for an in-place upgrade or perhaps who wants to integrate one of these GPUs into a small form factor PC. However, and I say however because I'm switching from the more positive rosy things to the things that are maybe a little bit more critical, it does not seem like the 7900 XTX is going to have quite the performance chops that the RTX 4090 does. That's evident both in the price that it's being offered at, at about $1,000, as well as the charts that AMD shared themselves. AMD will tell you pretty upfront if they feel like they're their new solution is going to outperform the competitor, whether they're talking about CPUs and the competitor is Intel, or graphics cards and the competitor is Nvidia. The charts that AMD shared were comparing these cards to the last generation, which is fine and fair, but it does indicate that AMD is not quite as confident in putting the rasterization performance of the new cards head to head with the 4090. Likewise, if you look at some of these ray tracing numbers, yes, they are improved versus the previous generation 6000 series, but the previous 
generation 6000 series wasn't exactly stellar in terms of ray tracing performance itself. So we're likely not going to see AMD suddenly catch up to Nvidia in this area, which is becoming more important because lots more games support it. And let's face it, eye candy is eye candy and a lot of people want to turn all that stuff on. Perhaps the biggest indication of this is just what Lisa was talking about right from the get-go, which is that AMD has made all these strides in terms of performance per watt. Efficiency is key here, and yes, they probably can outperform Nvidia if you're looking at performance per watt, just not necessarily raw performance. Likewise, there were some negative aspects of the presentation itself, and my opinion on this might be slightly tainted by watching Steve from Gamers Nexus's review, because he really gave them a hard time for some of the marketing hype type stuff that they included. For one, switching pretty casually between 8K resolution and 8K ultra wide resolution, which has half the pixel of full 8K is a little bit misleading. And while I do not blame them at all for highlighting the fact that these cards use dual 8-pin power connectors instead of 12VH power, they may have led the audience on a little bit by seeming to indicate that that was their decision because the 12VH power connector sucks, whereas it's very clear to anyone who knows how GPU manufacturing works that this was AMD's plan for a very long time and could not have been a reaction to the much more recent issues that have come up with that 12VH power 600 watt connector. And finally, if I'm really digging in, why 7900 XTX AMD? I know that some of the GPU code names have used XT and XTX in the past, but you already have established like the 6900 XT and then the 6950 XT. That to me is a nice little number bump in the actual product name that indicates, yes, this card is going to perform a little bit better than the non-50 version. I think sticking with 7900 XT and 7950 XT would have been better than 7900 XT and 7900 XT X. And this little bit of naming confusion is further exacerbated by the fact that uh, AMD's CPU team launched the Ryzen 7000 CPUs just a little over a month ago, and there's a 7900X there as well. So everyone get ready to build your 7900X, 7900XTX system with too many sevens and nines and Xs. So there's a rundown of some of my thoughts and reactions to AMD's announcements last week. And the last thing I wanted to point out is that of all the companies that are in this space, I think Nvidia has done the greatest job of anchoring the prices high enough that when AMD came out and said, these cards cost $900 and a thousand bucks, there were more people talking online about like, wow, great pricing Nvidia for thousand dollar graphics cards than I've ever seen before. Cause people were like, well, at least they're not $1,600. But that brings me back to the original question once again, which is that the secondary market is super hot right now, whether you're looking at last gen cards or used cards. And I think that's where most of the competition is gonna come for these new GPUs that are launching. Okay, I do have a few other questions. I'm gonna try to get through these pretty quickly. Mr. McGreed, hey, how's it going? Uh, long time viewer and thank you for your question yet again. Uh, do you find it challenging to come up with new ideas for videos? I used to, actually when I first went into pendant, I had a really hard time coming up with stuff. Now I have tons of things that I could be working on and I just don't have enough time. Also jokes and intros, is it difficult to keep those fresh and on point? For that, it really has to do with me personally. If I am well rested and in a good mood, it's like smooth sailing and I have so much fun with it. If I'm stressed trying to get stuff done and I'm on a time crunch, then suddenly it becomes a lot more difficult to make the funny happen. So you might have noticed, like if you go back into October, there were probably slightly fewer jokes in some of the tech news episodes. But the third part of the question here, which uh, absolutely I did not go and edit it in there myself, is uh, we've mentioned lots of cool things with the new office here since we've moved in. Has anything gone horribly wrong? And the answer there is absolutely yes. We have had a couple sad and unfortunate things go on with monitors. Like, look at this monitor over here. Can you see that? Yeah, this is my LG ultra wide monitor. It's a hundred and I think it's 144 Hertz refresh rate. This is a really nice monitor. I did a video on it a, a few years ago now, but as you can see, uh, the panel is now cracked and it's sent some lines vertically up there and it's even sent some lines horizontally across to the other side. I didn't even see when this happened, but I have this monitor on sort of a, an independent stand and this is a sit stand desk that we can lower or raise. And at some point, the corner of the desk here just went right into that part of the monitor 
here. Of course, it happened like right in the middle of October, so I haven't even had the chance to like swap it out for something else yet. It, it's still functional enough for now. And we had an Asus monitor arrive. It was supposed to be uh, the one for Joe's workstation over there, and it was damaged during shipping. Uh, so that we've now returned back to Asus and we're wait waiting for the replacement as well. But it's just really sad for me. Anytime you have a really nice monitor panel like this and it gets a crack or something, because it's pretty much dead, you can't use it after that, and you have to figure out something else. Third question here from a frisky gamer. If you were using a very outdated build, what would your strategy be for upgrading? Uh, would you go for previous gen or would you go for next gen stuff? Uh, how would you stick to a budget? This is a good question. It's a bit more general, so I'm gonna give you some sort of general replies. First of all, if your build is too outdated, you might not be able to carry over any of those components at all. Uh, the components you're most likely to be able to carry over would potentially be the case if it's full-size ATX and it has enough room and airflow for your new build. And then possibly your power supply if it has enough wattage, but if you're talking about an older build, then you might not have enough wattage. For that, I would check the graphics card you plan to use, and that's the best indication of how much wattage you might need for your power supply. I generally consider the core components of the build to be the motherboard, the CPU, and the memory, because all three of those really need to be compatible with one another, and we've just crossed over a threshold switching from DDR4 memory to DDR5 memory. So right now, yes, you can get some really good deals on slightly older hardware that uses DDR4 memory, but it does mean you wouldn't have the upgrade path that you would if you invested in new stuff that uses DDR5 right now. Of course, that really boils down to a budget question. Do you have enough money to invest in the newer standard or do you need to save some of that so you have money left over for a graphics card, for example? So the answer to this question really changes depending on the timing. If you wanna check out my November monthly builds video, I go over a couple builds, one that uses DDR4 and one that uses DDR5. But once you've figured those two things out, do you have anything from the original system that you can carry over or is it all too outdated, what platform do you want to invest in, the new stuff or the slightly old stuff, then you can figure out what's left over for the graphics card, for example, or your storage, because those components are really easy to drop in and swap for pretty much any system. Question four from Woman Respector. Good on you. Love watching you get probed every month. Could we get an update about the Corsair chairs that you've been using? I think you said you'd do that. Sure, sure. Uh, these Corsair chairs here, the TC200s, uh, these actually arrived all the way back in July. Uh, there's a white one here, and then there's a black one over there. So I've been sitting in this chair when I, when I do stuff here at the desk or, or when I present videos. I have done a little bit of an upgrade to them and switched over to these Oasis rollerblade wheels. I will say that these wheels that they come with, they have like a little a tent, like just a little a little bump to them, which is made so like they don't roll around when it's sitting still. So if you're on like a perfectly flat floor, your chair won't like roll out from under you when you try to sit down on it, for example. But I will say I have been happy with them. I mean, I don't have any major complaints. Uh, I can't say I've done like extensive long-term sitting in them to see if like, you know, I get back problems or anything like that. I'd say the, the one thing about this one back here is it's the white one. It has this white trim around the top and I constantly feel like whenever I grab the chair by the top of it to move it around, like my grubby hands are gonna get prints on there or something. So I've so I've tried to grab it by here, you know, where the, where the straps go for your your racing straps when you when you buckle yourself in or whatever. Um, but yeah, there they are. Check that video out if you want to see us build them. And yeah, they, they've been pretty solid for us so far. Here's our last question because this has gone on long enough. Maurice Wright. Hey, Maurice. Uh, this is your probe that you're bringing to the probing party. It's always a party when we get probed. Uh, in the one last AM4 build video where we built Joe's new editing PC, why did I not let Joe peel the plastic. Several assumptions here, like I asserted my celebrity status to rob Joe of that honor, or that we <laughs> perhaps had a rock, paper, scissors tournament. So there's the build, uh, which has been working great, by the way. Uh, actually, I'm very happy with that build. And there's me, obviously, peeling the plastic just right there in front of Joe, with no consideration at all for his feelings or other personal things, I don't know. But no, I'm glad you asked this question because uh, you know this is one of those fundamental PC building things that I don't feel like has been addressed uh, in the tech community. Does the builder or the buildee of the PC that's built peel the plastic? Now, I am in sort of a unique situation. Often when I'm building a system here that's maybe gonna be a giveaway or something like that, I wanna do what's best for the audience. And the audience obviously wants that satisfying moment where the plastic is peeled and the build is revealed and everything is nice and pretty and pristine. So that's why I do it. I do it for you guys. I mean, obviously I get an immense amount of satisfaction from it as well, but it's for you that I do that. And it just happened to be a unique situation that this build was for Joe and he was also there and he could have done it himself. So I, I, I guess I should apologize. Joe, since you're here for this video too, I'm sorry. 
and I will let you peel the plastic computers I build for you in the future. <laughs> But guys, that is all the time I have for today. So thank you very much for watching this video, this 75th episode of Probing Paul. And if you, again, have any questions for me for the next time I'm probed, leave those in the comment section down below. You could also hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. You could also check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can find shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and all manner of high quality merchandise. Great way to support my channel. Great way to get yourself some high quality merchandise. And consider subscribing to my channel as well if you're not already for more high quality tech videos just like this one. Thanks again for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one.